In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to do color correction. There are many, many different ways that we can um, correct color in Photoshop, and, um, and there's reasons for doing each and every one of them, and special cases, and sometimes you just want to make things look crazy, and that's awesome. Um, but what's usually good is to start by color correcting everything, um, all of your assets, and then starting to combine things. Because I want to show you one of the problems really quick with what we did in the, the first couple tutorials, right? So we did all this work to put Humpty Dumpty in here. And just as a heads up, um, in this example, I actually um, have... I'm going to close this histogram because we don't need that yet. And I'm going to hide this. Um, but so I've set the blend mode on all the Dumpties back to normal, right? So they're their normal color. Now, the issue is that we want to um, have these Dumpty characters match the back, right? We want all the color correction to be accurate. Now, the reason for that is we want the whites, whatever should be white in this image to be white in this image. Whatever should be black in this image should also match what should be black in this image. And whatever's somewhere in the middle should be somewhere in the middle, and it shouldn't be too blue or too, too yellow or too red or too green, right? All of these things should match. And then from there, we, what's nice about that is we have a good strong foundation, and then we can go and manipulate and change and make things crazy. But we want to start with a good foundation. And so, you know, I was so excited just to show you selection tools and how to do things that we jumped ahead of this. Now, the reason for this is because in order to do the color correction we want to do, we're going to be using adjustment layers. And I'm just going to go ahead and create, I'm going to select the very top layer up here um, because I want to create an adjustment layer that's going to affect the whole image. And I'm just going to create a curves adjustment layer. So you'll notice there's properties, there's adjustments. This one here with a curve on it is curves. If I click on this um, and we just go ahead and what I want you to do, we're going to tweak this out and make it awful. I'm just going to go click on here once. I'm going to come up here, click again, pull this down, and you can see that this is impacting the whole image. It's impacting every single layer on here, right? And really what I want to do is I just want the whole background to be to be affected and why I would want to do this to it I don't know but you know um, and so but the challenge is that it's affecting everything now if I move it down and say oh well I just want to affect the background then it is just affecting the background but remember we've made this layer two we've made this layer one so we have these other chunks that aren't being affected by it and it's all mixed together and so it would be so much better if our base image if we had taken all of our base artwork and we had a very like repeatable system that we could use to balance the 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 color um, and to make the tonal range good um, in all of our images. And so what I'm going to show you is you know it's a little tedious and technical, but it's a really good repeatable way. Um, I learned this in a tutorial several years ago, and if I could find that tutorial again, I would credit the author but I have no idea. I've searched and I just can't find it. I don't know if it's not up anymore or if I just lost it somewhere <laughs> in all of the in all of the content that's already out there. So um, we are going to use curves, but what we're going to do is we're going to start with our base image and we're going to we're going to work from there. And so I'm going to do use this as an opportunity to introduce something called smart objects. Um, because we're going to create some smart objects and we're going to make the adjustments on there so that they can be applied to this project. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my curves that I just created, I'm going to select it, I'm going to hit delete to get rid of that. Then I'm going to take my background layer and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go down to convert to smart object. Now what this does is it creates essentially a separate file for this layer. And so now if I hover over the icon here and double click, what that's gonna do is it's opening a new pane in my, um, in, in my window that's layer0.psb. And .psb files are 
Photoshop like large document files or something, but basically they're a file type that Photoshop documents use to do smart objects is the quickest way to do this. And what's nice about this is anything I can do in a normal image file, I can do in one of these documents. And so I can create new layers, I can do adjustments, I can do all of these things. And so it's a really nice way if I already have a file together with all my assets in it, before I start compositing anything, especially if I'm gonna be cutting and pasting and moving, selecting things and moving them around and layering them, um, I'm going to want to um, do these adjustments in each one of these files separately. The other thing is that if I have, I could put the adjustment layers in my folder in my other file, but it's a nightmare in terms of it increases the number of layers that you have um, and it makes it really hard to work with. So instead we're going to do it here. So I've got my background layer and now we need to create a couple adjustment layers so we can start figuring out our different um, points. Now you'll notice that I already did this once and so there's these points on here and honestly I don't know how to clear them. Um, okay, so because what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to figure out a way that we can figure out, okay, what pixel is actually white? What pixel is actually black? And then what pixel is halfway between those two values, right? And that way, we'll, what we'll do is we're gonna end up adjusting the brightness, the contrast, and if the image is a little bit too warm, a little bit too cool, we can adjust all of that as well. So, let's go to our adjustments. And the first thing we're gonna need to do is create a curves um, adjustment layer. Now this is the layer where we're going to be doing all of the work in terms of that's going to do all the leg work in terms of making this happen, right? And we've already, in the other image, we stretched it all over the place and made it awful. We're not going to do that. We're actually going to be using these eyedropper tools. You'll notice it's kind of hard to see, but one of them is filled with black, one of them is filled with gray, and one of them is filled with white. And what that means is this is the one you use to choose your white point, your gray point, and your black point. So we're going to do that in a second, but first we need a way to figure out what's white, what's black, and what's gray. So we're going to go back to our adjustments, and we're going to create a threshold adjustment. Now the posterize and threshold look similar. The threshold is this one here in the middle that's definitely black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now you'll notice that automatically it makes it a two-color image, right? It's black and white. And this little uh, triangle here tells you where that threshold is. Anything um, brighter than 128 is going to be white. Anything darker or less bright or lower in number than 128 is going to be black. Now this number is based on the idea that there is a brightness value from 0 to 255. And we're not going to get into why, it's just a standard sized unit um, of counting in a computer, right? And so it's when you hear about 8-bit graphics, that's 0 to 255, right? So 128 is basically in the middle of that. And so, um, so that's great. But what we want to do is we want to be able to figure out where, um, you know, the black pixels are and the white pixels. Typically, white is on this side, black is on this side and you'll see that our graph is actually truncated on either end. That means that this should stretch all the way over to here and this should stretch all the way over to there. By the time we're done with this, our, this graph, which is called a histogram, will do that. And all this does is it shows you, for each value from 0 to 255, how many pixels in the image um, have that value, right? And so you can see these different spikes and lulls and all of that. It doesn't matter where they are on the screen, it just counts the total number of pixels. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by trying to find my black point. So I'm going to come down. I'm just going to scroll this down. And what I want to do is I want to, I don't need to go all the way down here, but you can kind of see some, some black noise up here, right where this just about starts to peak here, where it's just like a little tiny bit more. I'm going to stop. So for me, it's at 21. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Now, the other reason to do this numerically like this is because every single monitor and every single, uh, basically every single monitor is calibrated a little differently. 
right? So you're never 100% sure that it's actually, that what you're looking at in your screen is 100% accurate to the color it should be. This is a, a, a much more scientific way to get it very accurate. And so what we're gonna do is, in order to do this, if I was to you try and use the curves tool right now and select one of these black pixels, um, it's actually going to select this color black. It's not going to select whatever the base image is um, and make an adjustment to it. And so what I need to do is I need to set um, a basically a marker or a pin so that I can come back and grab this when I'm done with the threshold thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the eyedropper tool. And under the eyedropper tool, there's this option down here called the color sampler tool. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And when I do that, you can't really see the icon because it's like impossible to see on the screen. Maybe down, it's down, now I have it down near the bottom, I'll wiggle so you can see, but you can see it's got a little crosshair next to it. And all this does is, what I wanna do is, um, also the tip of the eyedropper is the pixel that it's gonna to touch. So I'm gonna to come down here. I'm just gonna click in one of these areas where I know I'm gonna hit black. Um, and you'll see it, it sets this thing and you can't, you can barely see it, but there's a number one next to it. So now what I need to do to pick my white, what's going to be my white point is I need to drag this all the way over the other direction. And somewhere in here where there's this spike here at the end, I'm going to go ahead and um, zoom out a little bit because clearly I can't see anything. And if I can't see anything at all, I'm going to hit Command or Control Zero so I know I'm zoomed all the way in. Ah, there we go. Right. The only thing that's truly white up here or close, the closest pixels to white in this image are on this top border. And so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that. And note, this is, you know, this is actually outside the edges of the image that I'm using, but I know that that paper is not actually 100% white. Um, and I don't want it to be 100% white, right? But I do want this edge, you know, if, this, if the white around this edge is accurate, then everything else will be. So I'm just going to zoom in here a bit. I'm going to grab somewhere in this big blob. So now I have that number two. Now, I've got my white and my black point ready to go. Now I need to do my gray point, and the gray point's a little bit trickier. So what I need to do is I have my thresholds here. Um, I have curves on, right? Currently, curves isn't doing anything to the image, right? By default, it does nothing um, until I start tweaking some settings and things like that, right? So I've got threshold curves. What I want to do now is I want to select my background image, uh, my background layer. And I want to, um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new type of layer called a solid fill layer. And a solid fill layer, the way you create that is you go to layer at the top, and you go down to new fill layer, and you go to solid color. And I'm going to call this, um, all I'm going to change is the name, which is going to be 50% gray. I'm going to hit OK. As soon as I do that, it's going to pop up this color picker. Now, magenta is the last thing I chose, and so it's, doing this horrible pink color. What I want is I want to create 50% gray. And the simplest way to do that is to come down here. Yours might be set closer to gray as it stands, but mine is not. So in this HSB field, these are, so hue saturation brightness, RGB, red, green, blue, and CMYK, are, and this L, A, and B, those are all different ways of measuring um, of, of, talking about color, right? We're going to set our hue to zero. We're going to set our saturation to zero. You'll notice that gets pretty white. And then we are going to set our brightness to 50%. And that will give us 50% gray. You can also come down here and enter 128, 128, 128 in here. Um, this is the hex value, the web color value, um, right? Whatever that works. So I'm going to hit OK. And I've got this 50% gray layer. Now, for the time being, I'm going to turn off my threshold layer. And I need to make one more change. What I need to do is I need to change the blend mode of this 50% gray layer because I want it to blend with this background layer. And the blend mode I want is difference. Now, difference makes for some really beautiful and um, interesting uh, false color images. And what difference does is it says, uh, is it compares this layer's color to this layer's color. And the closer the bottom layer is to the top layer, in this case, the closer the colors here are to 50% gray, 
the closer they appear to black, right? So you can say, oh, well, this is definitely somewhere up in here is about 50% gray, somewhere in here, kind of on the mountains, and then some of the places in the water and under the bridge looks like it's pretty close, right? So those are my 50 areas where I probably have about 50% gray, but there's a lot of reds in there. There's, it's not quite there. And anything that's closer to, the closer to white it gets, the further away it is from 50% gray, right? So it's either on one end or the other. But what we wanna do is we wanna use threshold again. So I'm gonna turn threshold on. It's gonna make everything totally black. I'm gonna select threshold. And the reason it's totally black is because right now with the way this 50% gray and this background is set up, all the color information is in the lower half of this graph. So what I wanna do is I wanna pull this down and um, I want to go to where the black is, right? So just where this very bottom edge um, of, you know, so my threshold should be pretty low. And so I'm gonna come in here somewhere there's, you know, I could go even lower. Um, and then I wanna look for kind of a chunk that's big enough to easily select. So it looks like there's some little spots in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom way in, not out. Until I get to a place where I can kind of see a blob here. There's some good blobs in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my third point in here. Now I want you to note that as I've been dropping these points, this info window has popped up and you'll see that I actually have this number one, number two, and number three here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back out and you'll notice when I zoom out, these actually get much larger, which is really nice because otherwise we wouldn't be able to find them on the screen at all. Okay, so I've got my three points set. So now that I've done that, I've done all the hard work. Now I just need to do the basics. And so what I need to do first is turn off my 50% gray, turn off my threshold, select my curves object. And then I just need to, you know, remember which one of these is the right one. So I'm gonna start with the black point because that was my first one. So I'm gonna, this top eyedropper in my properties here for this adjustment layer, the curves layers here. I'm gonna come over here and select that. Then I am going to go ahead and grab my white point, which is the second one I did. I'm gonna come up here and select that. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm gonna basically hover right over that point with the third one and select that. Now, you should have already noticed the differences in this. And if I go ahead and just turn the visibility of curves off, you'll see that I've gained an immense amount. You can see what's happening here on the curves as well. There, it's made each one of these colored graphs a little bit off each other. Um, but what it's done when this is on, right, is it's much more vibrant, right? This is a, a much nicer looking image. It's got a lot better tonal range. There's some really nice blacks. Everything just looks a lot better. It's a lot less flat than it was before. And I know that it is pretty much as accurate as it can possibly be just from a technical standpoint, right? If this gets transferred anywhere else, it's going to maybe it'll look a little different on the screen, but I know that it's accurate. And um, once I've done all that, the other thing that we can take a look at is our um, histogram, right? We've been kind of looking in here, but it's not visible up here um, at all. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to window. We're gonna come down to this histogram thing and you can see now, right, before, this is kind of what the base image is, right? There's this gap here and gap here. Now that color, um, these values stretch from the very bottom end of the range to the very top end of the range. And that's exactly what we wanted, right? And we wanted this to be stretched out and then we wanted that balance between red, blue, and green. And we got it. So, now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and save this image. So I'm gonna hit Command S to save. And once I've saved this, right, again, this is a smart object and it's gonna think about it and you'll see that said updating smart objects. And so if I go back to this file, you'll notice that without any other, without any adjustments in here, this background layer has updated. Now you'll notice that the, th the things I've cut out of it <laughs> into other layers have not updated. Um, and so that's a little bit problematic. Um, 
right? Because that would be something that would be nice. But now, if I was to go back through and redo this, what I could do is use this base image and then do my selection areas off of this base image. This smart object, it doesn't work the same in some ways, um, but it does work the same in terms of selection tools, right? So if I was to go uh, up here and grab the lasso and just, I don't know, select this boat um, and then hit command or control C and command or control V, right? It's still gonna paste this, um, right, as its own layer, right? The same as it would have worked previously. Now, with smart objects, and I'm gonna un undo that because um, I don't really need that. I'm gonna deselect this. With smart objects, one of the things you cannot do um, with a smart object while you're in your main image is um, you cannot paint on it. So let me go ahead and if I grab the brush tool, you'll see I have a no symbol. And that's because it's a smart object and if I'm doing any brush work like that, I need to do it on the, um, on the actual file that holds that smart object. The other um, nice thing about smart objects is when we get to use filters, what we can do is, by default, filters on a layer um, will affect that layer permanently. But with smart objects, if I go, if I say blur and go to Gaussian blur, um, what it should do, and you'll see that, I'm gonna reduce that blur a little bit if I hit okay. What that does is it creates what's called a smart filter. And a smart filter is a filter that you can both turn the visibility on and off of, so you can undo it, and you can also double click on it, oops, to open up that dialog box and adjust it later, right? And so you need smart objects in order to do that. And we'll look at other ways to, to create it for this purpose. Um, but, right, so that's um, another um, reason why you would want to use a smart object. But this is just a heads up, like if you're doing compositions, uh, if you're composing multiple images, smart objects are usually a really nice way to go. All right, so I've gone ahead and done that process on layer zero. What I would like you to do, sorry, I'm gonna turn the smart filter off. I think I should be able to delete. Uh, clear smart filters, yeah, there we go, okay. Um, so, what I want you to do is I'm going to want you to go in and um, do the same thing for one of these dumpties, right? We've got four copies of it. Really, um, we can um, we can do that, but what you should do first is right-click on it, go to Unlink Layers, and then just select one of them. In this case, I'm going to select Dumpty 4 and I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and I'm gonna say convert to smart object. Now once I've done that, if I double click, right, here's Mr. Dumpty and I can do the exact same process again to get this color balanced. And so I would like you to do that with the Dumpty, with one Dumpty, and then go ahead and um, take the, oops, sorry, right, go ahead and do your own adjustments in terms of like where you place, you know, Humpty Dumpty on the screen, on, on the image. Okay, and that's the end of this tutorial.